the family <coughs> has asked several people to share some of their thoughts and memories of Jean. The first would be Glenn, um, Jean's son. I'm going to add lib a little because that's how my mom wanted it. Um, I'll just jump kind of right in the middle. There's a pic. There's some a picture she took. I don't talk loud enough. There's a picture she took uh, had taken, and one thing she liked to do is uh, she didn't like sometimes the faces. Not this one, but if they weren't right, she get scissors. And she'd find other pictures of us and cut them out and then put them together, have them copied, and we'd get a copy in the mail. And I'd be looking, I'd go, well, wait a minute, my, I don't have a neck. Or, my arm doesn't look proper here. And I'd call my mind, would you? Well, I'd move a couple things around. You know, that's kind of a lot about how she was. You know, whether it was putting together three or four days worth of meals and making some big souffle. And I know my daughters and son, they, you know, they like certain ways and say, what's this, uh, Grandma and she all, what? I put this together, it's like three or four days worth of food. Put a microwave ready to go. She was kind of one of those people that could put stuff together. You know, I really believe that. I think that when we were coming up in the 60s and 70s, uh, most women in general were homemakers. They're home with their kids. And in our case, we lived on a long street in Cupertino. It was like a mile long and everybody had big families. And fortunately for me, everybody on almost on the block was close to my age and males. So we were riding our stingrays and there's a bunch of things going on. But the tolerance back then uh, with the mothers, by the time I got home, the mother up the street already called. And so my, you know, my mom had a way, I got the psychology early and uh, it happened later on with my friends. Anytime there was something to go wrong, you know, and plus my, my dad, he was a, he was a little bit different, but together they'd get you in there and sit you down and you know, it's going to be a two or three hour operation. Yeah, I mean, you were like, punish me somehow. Can you stop talking? Yeah. So I got the psychology early. I really did. And uh, I'm using that at work now, where I am. And everyone, when they have a question, they ask me, because I was kind of born into it. My mom just had this knack for how to work with people. And so then, as the 70s went along, and she went to college, and things started opening up, and the, the lights started coming on, and when she started getting into her practice, she could just touch people a certain way. And most of you probably know that. I mean, and she could be poignant. You know, like I was saying, one day I came, just got over her house for the summers. We moved up to Oregon, and that was her 4-3 uh, loss. Her first loss was when her dad, Carl, passed away when she was about 13 years old. And uh, her and her brother, Ron Matson, with the help of their mother, became real strong-willed and entrepreneurs and, and had very successful businesses. And then it was uh, my brother, Tom, who's... Uh, over here when he was 36 and she was very resilient i mean she could take tragedy and she could just kind of push through and uh then after that it was her second husband uh, don Werfline, who's over here in uh, 1996 and uh she pushed through and in 99 my uh, grandmother who passed away and very close to but she could take tragedy mourn on it, grieve on it, learn from it, and keep going. And that's, that's a trait, it's hard, to, it's hard to go, you know, when, when things happen, it's easy to just get in a cocoon. She somehow could come out of it. And so, you know, she just was one of those people that, to me, is not really replaceable in certain ways. And she wasn't into the business for the monetary value. She really wasn't. She got so much out of the relationships she made with people. I can remember going to some meetings, and I went to this one meeting, and there was uh, all women in there, they're talking about all this stuff, and it's just, you could see the admiration and the respect they had for her. And I was like, whoa, how do I get some of this? <laughs> but, uh, anyway, she, uh, she was a great mother, a great grandmother, and a great husband, 
Uh, one of her joys, there, she was widowed for quite some time, and through kind of a blind date situation, you guys trying to get it going, so I'll try to raise my voice. Anyway, through kind of a blind uh, date situation, she met a man named Tom Rohr, and they kind of clicked, and the more they were together, the more they were similar. They felt similar, even though their personalities were somewhat off opposite. My mom was like, a big bomb was going off <laughs> in the way she just did some. Tom was, was more reserved, but what he said, you listened to, it made sense. And so anyway, the two of them uh, got together uh, in 2003, had a wedding, and even at the wedding, there was not enough chairs and tables. There were all the people, like, that's how my mom wanted it. That's how she wanted it now. She wanted as many people that can tell something about her, she really en enjoyed that, <laughs> you know. And so, and I, I know my daughters are laughing, but and I tried to I tried to do a couple little things, but I wrote a thing, kind of threw it away because it wouldn't really do it. But I'm just going to need a couple comments. I want to thank my sister Laura and Pauline and Robin and Todd um, for putting this together. It was, you know, when you have something tragic, it happens like this, and you got to pick up the pieces. And you got to make decisions. Personalities come out. Uh, emotions come out. You, you, you know, you just all these things came out. And so we had a talk to turvy time, but we got it together. And I think it's come out beautifully. And it's what my mom would want. So uh, uh, I was going to put what she had. What she would do is she'd write a memoir for herself, <laughs> and then she'd write one to all of us. And then it just kept going. I got addendums all the time. <laughs> I'd always get addendum. And it seemed like in the last five years, I was getting more of those. And I would say, Mom, what's going on? There's something going on. And she really didn't tell me uh, much about, she said, her healthy as an ox and, and all these things. And, you know, and really didn't kind of let me know what was going on. She felt something. I think she felt something was a mess. Something wasn't right. And so anyway, I, these addendums were coming in left and right. I said, hey, do you need me to come down? What's, you know, what's going on? No, no, everything's great. Everything's great. But um, unfortunately, you know, events happened and she passed away. And it, I mean, I would expect it, seriously, I would expect her to live to 100. That's just the way in my mind that she, you know, that I thought. And you just didn't know when it was going to happen. It's way too young for her. But uh, she had a great life, and I think we all treated her really good. So uh, uh, we already went over a career. Her career was, you know, for her, she was a rock star. I mean, she, like I said, she wasn't in it for the monetary. She was in for team building and making fe people feel good. And she loved to do a little bullet point. She'd be listening a long time, a long time, and all of a sudden, boom. She'd say one word to the person, the person would be kind of shocked, like, almost like, how dare you say that? But then the more they thought about it, the more I said, you know what? That's true. And that was a little bit about went on in Valley with the engineers and the high tech. And there's so much focus, especially in a man's life being an engineer, on, on everything fitting in the box. And then she somehow could get in there and poke them a little bit and make them realize that there's other things that I need to be concentrated on too. And that's kind of hard to do in your life when you really focus on that. But anyway, um, I'm hitting most of the bullet points. <laughs> I have a whole bunch on back. But, uh, this is like at my daughter's wedding, I'm talking, I just have bullet points that I, I go off past. But anyway, uh, uh, the early life, like I went over, and then uh, it was quite an entertaining time, the last house she had on Bryant Street. When she got that house, all of a sudden, I don't know how many barbecues and parties, and, and there was always someone different coming over, and she just loved it. She loved the planning to get things going, and uh, so my memory will always be of, you know, I hope I can live up to what she accomplished. 